just come down to the beach this evening to try and set up a motion time lapse over sunset, brew up a nice cup of coffee here on the beach, and say thanks to you for supporting this channel. So, let's go. Well, hi folks, I've come down to the beach this evening uh, to play with a time-lapse platform that uh, I got a little while ago. Now, I've done sort of time-lapse with the Osmo Pocket quite a lot, and I really like the fact that that can do some motion time-lapse where it kind of sweeps across during the time-lapse, and so you get that movement as well as the time-lapse in the, in the sort of final video. I really like that. But what I also really like is doing time-lapse with the Nikon Z7 because then you get all of that really high resolution. Now you can get a really sumptuous kind of, uh, depth to the image that you don't necessarily get with the Osmo Pocket. Of course, the Z7 doesn't have a kind of a, a gimbal in the same way as the Osmo Pocket does. So I got myself a turntable and it's called a SERP. Genie Mini and uh, I'd been kind of eyeing up these things for a little while and uh, I was watching a video on YouTube recently where somebody was using one of those to get some really epic time lapses and I just thought ah oh, sod it can I get hold of one of these second hand and actually have a play with one and I went on eBay and boom there was one with the right cable to use with an Econ Z7 straight away so it's like okay I'll get that, I'll have a go with it. If I don't like it or it sits on the shelf for months, I can always put it back on eBay, probably don't lose very much money, and I've had a little go. So here we are down the beach, and uh, I've just set the thing up. It's uh, a little bit fiddly because, I mean, this was actually my first time of using it, so I probably faffed around far more than uh, it's kind of necessary. Um, I'm sure I'll get quicker at it once... Uh, once I've used it more. Anyway, in terms of camera settings, I've got the uh, uh, 50 millimeter 1.4 lens on the Z7. I've mounted it on the tripod, and what you do with the Genie Mini is you mount it on top of your tripod, and then mount your camera on top of that, and then it's actually controlled from an app on the phone, and that actually tells it when to move, and it also tells the camera when to fire the shutter using that synchronization cable. It's in terms of settings, I've got the lens focused to the set somewhere out in the sea, so I want the sort of Aaron in the background to definitely be in focus, and I want um, some of this foreground in too, so I thought I'd start um, by using the camera in aperture priority. I've started in uh, about uh, f13, I think it was, which um, gets me the shutter speed of uh, 60 of a second, which is what I want for this tonight. I would have gone a bit uh, lower if I'd known that the clouds were going to immediately come in but as I was setting it up it was quite sunny but uh, you know this is all about experimentation so uh, we'll leave that uh, to its own devices. The, the app's very cool because 
it lets you actually sort of visualize the position where the camera is going to be and then you can kind of control it to there. And then I was using another app at the same time, one called PhotoPills, and uh, that, allows, that uh, allows me to sort of have an augmented reality image up with where the sun is going to set and where the sun's going to be in an hour and in, and in two hours. So I can set my sweep angle to uh, sort of cover that, which I hope I've done. I might have messed it up. We'll find out in a bit. Anyway, two hour time lapse started. Um, sun's going to set in seconds, really. It's about to set pretty much. Uh, I had hoped to get this set up a little bit uh, more quickly um, uh, and there was no kind of uh, chat to camera earlier on because I really did have a limited amount of time to try and uh, come and set this all up because uh, you know the clocks have changed now and uh, you know the idea of being able to do anything in an evening is it's, it's very challenging now so it's not even five o'clock and the sun is setting so uh, yeah welcome to winter in Scotland it's uh, not even November yet it's gonna be, it's gonna get darker than this anyway there are some clouds and uh, while I don't know whether there's going to be a spectacular sunset anymore I thought earlier there might be these clouds moving through and the sea reflecting ought to make for a nice image while that's uh, recording I'm gonna go over there and I'm going to set up a twig stove and I'm going to brew up a little bit of coffee. So let's go and see if we can find uh, some fuel and uh, make a brew. So I'm going to make my cup of coffee using this little twig stove. It's got uh, four parts and uh, you kind of put them together, yeah, like that. So that sits on the ground. This little kind of basket goes down the middle of it. And then this bit, these bits fold out and it sits on top. And yeah, you can put your kettle on and they're like that. This twig stove's great because it means you can have a fire and cook on a fire even in situations where making an actual open fire might be either too dangerous for the environment or too much effort because you need a lot more wood. This burns very very efficiently because it's got these little holes that kind of direct the, the airflow which means that it uh, it directs all of the flame sort of up through here onto the pot. So, so it's actually much more efficient than uh, just having an open fire and sticking your kettle on top of it. Right, get a bit of birch bark out of the tinder pouch. And what I'll do is just use the knife to kind of make a pile of kind of little shaving bits off of the birch bark, so that'll help it to catch and then just bring this tail through because that's what we're probably going to actually light when this goes off so I'll just get a couple of sparks in on that and protect it a bit no nope, not yet let's try again here we go here we go, here we go. get that down into the into the pit of the twig stove and then just feed it with lots of these little twigs and just I found actually just there's no need to be kind of elegant about it or play around trying to do it uh, in any kind of order just get them in there because it's all protected from the outside so it's not uh, so once they're, once they're down there, it doesn't really matter. There's a, there's a good draw of air coming up through the stove anyway because of its design. So with this stove, um, I'd been uh, thinking about getting something like this for a little while. And uh, the famous one that you sort of hear about 
all over the place is called the bush buddy. And I looked it up and it's very expensive. And that wouldn't have been too much of a problem, I suppose, but not only is it expensive, it's really small. And I want to be able to put a full size kettle or even a frying pan on top of any stove I've got because, well, you know, cooking uh, outdoors with, you know, pop-up meals that just require hot water is all well and good if you're kind of on an expedition and weight's a, a limiting factor. But actually, I really like to try and cook proper food when I'm out camping whenever I can. So I kind of want to, uh, I kind of want to have a big pan and a, therefore a stove that can actually take a big pan. Anyway, I was chatting to a friend of mine and turns out he'd bought this off Amazon a good while ago and he'd never used it. So he said, well, you take it and have a go. And then uh, I could tell him whether it was worth, uh, worth having or not. Well, I think, well, I think it's very worth having and uh, I'm now keeping this one and I've ordered him a shiny new one from Amazon. And they're less than 20 quid, these things. It's absolutely incredible. It's uh, definitely going to be part of my the outdoor kit for my photo adventures and sort of camping adventures in the future because it's it's got the kind of the smell and the charm of cooking on fire but it's compact and lightweight and uh, doesn't leave a great big scar in the ground that you've got to deal with in some way so uh, yeah absolutely brilliant thing really pleased ah that's nice you even get a bit of warmth off of the uh, off of the fire as well, even though it's quite small and quite well contained. It's uh, burning quite nicely in there. So, the uh, other reason I wanted to make this video today and come down to the beach was that a couple of days ago, I got the first thousand subscribers on this YouTube channel. And that is absolutely fantastic. I. I feel so kind of honored that that many people have subscribed to this content and I'm really pleased after kind of making these videos that people are enjoying them and people are watching them because you know that's the that's the idea really I I'm making these kind of for fun and for my own enjoyment and because you know I want to show people the scenery and the wildlife in these places that I go to on my trips and uh, you know, it's absolutely, you know, it's absolutely brilliant. The, the kind of community that's built up around sharing the videos on YouTube and also the photos on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, it's been really, really nice, the kind of engagement that uh, that's brought with other people. And uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, hey, it's really awesome. I'm really pleased. Thank you very, very much. It's just over a year, actually, since I first... Uh, made a vlog for YouTube. Before that, I'd made some sort of, I don't know, short sequences of uh, wildlife footage from my trips. And, uh, you know, video was something I never really expected to, to get into. I have had a proper camera in one form or another since I was sort of secondary school age and used to go down to the Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust down near where my parents lived to go and photograph the birds there and uh, or go around and photograph flies. I like photographing flies with a sort of old macro lens. I had a friend who was always kind of very wary that whenever I was going to show him more photos they were just going to be more flies. But, uh, when I first started doing photography and uh, that I never really thought that uh, I'd end up making video at all because video was such a separate thing. It was so much more sort of complicated equipment. It was different equipment. But then over the last sort of, I don't know, 20, 25 years, the technology has changed so dramatically. 
And a few years ago, when I upgraded my um, DSLR camera to a Nikon D500, I suddenly realised that I had in my hands a really rather capable video camera. And so I thought I'd uh, have a go at actually trying to capture some, some video. And then, you know, more recently, kind of a bit over a year ago, I'd been watching sort of um, YouTube wildlife photography vlogs behind the scenes. And of course, the, the one that comes to mind immediately and by far the most compelling of the channels on YouTube that I ever watch is uh, that of Morton Hilmer. He's an absolute natural storyteller and uh, he really kind of takes you on a journey. But I thought to myself that, you know, while I'm never going to reach that kind of level, I thought, why not give it a go? And I was inspired to go and try and make a vlog. And I did just over a year ago with um, uh, picking up my trail camera that had uh, recorded some pine martins and some badgers. And uh, then uh, going off and looking for deer. And uh, yeah, that vlog was pretty terrible by the standards I'd come I'd sort of set myself now it was all shaky and I sort of stared at the camera like a psycho while I was talking because it was really kind of difficult to to talk to camera and uh, but yeah it isn't half addictive I really got the bug from it and I really really enjoyed making it and yeah making these videos is uh, a real time sink but I really love doing it it's great fun so, uh, yeah, I'm losing the light now, so I better stop waffling on, really. <laughs> so, yeah, a year later, um, I'd like to think I've improved a little bit, but it's still a massively steep learning curve. And then going back to the thing I said about community, it's absolutely brilliant that um, there is a sort of community of uh, YouTubers and photographers and just sort of wildlife enthusiasts that uh, I now talk to because I because of doing this channel and um, I've learned loads over the last year and I continue to learn loads and loads of new things I'm being smoked out here Pah, mother off. And yeah I continue to learn loads of new things and uh, yeah so uh, quite excited to see what the future of uh, doing this YouTube channel is going to bring um, I've certainly got lots of plans uh, far more plans than I've actually got time for, but uh, I'm certainly going to be doing at least one more sort of photo adventure to the Scottish Highlands before Christmas. And uh, I've got a few things planned around Christmas and New Year. And uh, in between, I've got a few sort of camera lens reviews and uh, more local trips. So uh, yeah, there'll be plenty more coming on the channel. And uh, yeah, so uh, if you're watching this to this point, um, kind of assuming that you're one of the subscribers anyway, but uh, if you're not, please consider subscribing. There's going to be lots of good stuff coming up. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the content. If there are specific things you want me to do or to talk about or sort of suggestions, please uh, leave them in the comments. And uh, this video will finish with the time lapse that I've recorded, which is still recording. 50 meters over there somewhere by the beach the tide's going out so I'm not worried about uh, my camera getting swamped I'm going to just have my cup of coffee here I can hear that that's nearly on the boil and uh, yeah thank you very much for watching and uh, yeah I will see you on the next video goodbye Thank you.